Today, I'm gonna to tell you about the worst day of my life. <laughs> yep, when I was in a Chinese sitcom. <laughs> When I was 16, I went to China for a year as an exchange student. Being from Sweden, most people wanted to go to the States or to Spain, but I was really obsessed with this idea of going to China. My main reason being that I thought it would be like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It wasn't. Thus began the most miserable year of my life. I lived in a city called Hefei, and there were hardly any foreigners there. So when this Chinese sitcom needed somebody to play an American wife, they were basically like, hey, you're a white girl. Do you want to play this guy's American wife? And I was like, I'm 16 and can barely speak Chinese. But they were like, no, no worries. You'll only have two lines. You'll be fine. So I agreed. And the day before the shoot, I get the manuscript and I look at it and I don't have two lines. I have 52 rows of lines, all in Chinese. And I have one day to learn them. At this point, I'd been in China for three months and I hadn't studied Chinese before that. So my Chinese was terrible at best. And as you might know, there's no way to figure out how to pronounce a Chinese character by just looking at it. So the first thing I had to do was to transcribe all of my lines into pinyin, which basically is Chinese written using the Latin alphabet. And then I had to translate it all into English to know what the heck I was saying. So next day I get to the set at like 7 a.m. And this is like the biggest sitcom in the province with millions of viewers. So at this point, I'm pretty freaking nervous, but there's no backing out. So they're like, son, R, go. And the scene starts and yeah, let's just freaking watch it. I don't even know what the sitcom is about. <laughs> the intro just has a bunch of lobster in it. I think they're running some sort of like lobster restaurant. Oh, there I am! Okay, this is seriously having me shake. I have hardly shown this to anyone, but it's it's time. I'm just gonna put it all out there. I need to move on. Okay, here we go. Here's my grand entrance. <laughs> it's okay, we need to pause this. It's line number one, it's the easiest one. I basically just say my name and I'm like, <laughs> can we just rewatch the sequence? <laughs> said my name. <laughs> what a funny joke. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Everybody likes you. <laughs> I did actually do that pretty convincingly, being cold. Just we had to retake the scene 14 times and out of those 14 times this was still the best delivery that I got just mid-sentence being like so hard. You can just see me radiate the love I feel for this man. Every night in my dreams, I see you. Some things you just can't fake. If I look clueless, it is because I am clueless. But I'm just covering up by either like really shaking my head or just like <laughs> smiling around. This is all defense mechanisms. This tape could be used as a study of defense mechanisms in human beings. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to give me money. I have money. I'm gonna start saying that whenever somebody tries to give something to me, I'll just be like, I don't need this thing. I already have things. Sassy American, Simone. After the 
first scene. It's the only time in my life that I've had a blackout. I could not remember my lines, even if my life depended on it. It felt like somebody taken my brain out and put it in a food blender and then just like poured it back in. I got on set at 7 a.m. and we were filming until 1 a.m. because that's how much I sucked. As the day went along, people just got more and more annoyed with me. And eventually like the Chinese actors would be like, whenever I got it wrong. And I remember the producer just like sitting with his, with his face in his hands, just being like, oh my God. It basically made people face palm. Not a great feeling. So tired and so in love. So concerned. Inquisitive. I could use this as a highlight reel for my acting skills. Just all the emotions. Oh Is this the right reaction to what just happened? I don't know. We're making dumplings. That much I know. This is the worst part of it all. They were like, this foreign girl doesn't know shit. Can you do anything in Chinese? And I'm like, yes, I can do this one song in Chinese. And this song is basically like the equivalent of Twinkle Little Star. Is that what it's called in English? The Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. Oh, I think if I would have been like, I can turn my eyelids inside out, they'd just been like, okay, just do it. Whatever you can do, we have to have something where this girl actually does something. Oh, she can't sing? We don't care. We don't care if every tone is off. Just have her do something that actually works. Just do it. Just do it. So crazy. <laughs> you can see I have a note in my lap. They're like not even trying to hide that I'm looking at the note. <laughs> I invite all of you to come to America. My treat. Can we just take a moment and think about this face? Because this is very educational. If anyone at any point does this face, get some help because this person is in serious pain. This is not a face of consent. Just stop whatever you're doing. I don't even think I can do it anymore. I have to be in like true pain. Is that it? I think we're getting there. Oh, I'm giving everybody presents. At this point, they were like, we're not getting any good Chinese out of this girl. Let's just have her speak English. So they fortunately just let me improvise in English. I just made it up as I went along. For a handsome man like you, I've got an electronic watch. What you want? I got an electronic watch. Wow, I think I'm hitting on him. There's a plot twist right here. Boom, electronic watch. That's how you pick guys up. And because you're beautiful like a flower, I give you this. I think I'm coming on to her as well. The sexual tension is just everywhere. <laughs> I like China. And I also like handsome Chinese men. I must have been ovulating or something. Yeah. 
done. The deed is done. Words cannot convey the things I feel for this tape. Bad words might, but they just, they're just not enough. I did not get it in front of a camera for six years after doing this, just to deal with the trauma of this experience. So yeah, there you go. That is the worst day of my life and I have it on tape. F that day so hard. <laughs> Do you have any similar stories? Please share them in the comments and make me feel better about this train wreck. Talk to you later. <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to conclude that I didn't peak during my teenage years. Nope. I think it's a good thing. Okay, done.